Good afternoon, I'm Daniel Miller and this is Immortals Phoenix Rising. The sun rose on the palaces and temples of the Golden Isle, their facades still and empty, the gods within, lost. But not Phoenix. Fighting with all her might, she had nearly reached Olympus on her quest to defeat Typhon, the dreaded god-destroyer. But first, she would uncover a historical secret. Phoenix had arrived on the shore where the great warrior Philoctetes had been left to die. A snake bite festering on his foot. How did he survive this little island? Why did Odysseus pick him up and carry him to the Trojan War? A war in which Philoctetes was fated to kill Paris, the instigator of the very war that... Oh! Stop fantasizing about random nobodies and tell the real story. What real story? Phoenix was about to enter the domain of the Cyclops, where world-famous hero and sailing enthusiast Odysseus had nearly met his end. It was there that she was destined to discover the lost secret of the gods. Zeus, the Cyclops' cave was in the Great Sea. Don't care. Also, forget the cave. I want to appreciate the view. You can't just ignore historical accuracy. That's your problem. Accuracy. Because clearly I can. And what is the secret of the gods? Oh, you don't know about that, do you? Oh, master of knowledge? Well, well, listen and learn. of you. Hello? Anyone in there? Phoenix eyed the Cyclops, keeper of the secret. But he was silent. The poor wretch had been frozen by the sea witch Circe's icy magic. Circe is on another completely different island. Or is she? Also, she doesn't have ice magic. Not ice. I see. She sees things and then transforms them. You know what? I bet you that you cannot enlighten us with one truth during your story. Not one. Done. What's your favorite food? The fruit from Grandma Magaya's garden. Gods, I miss the taste. The juice was so rich, it would flow down my chin. Divine. Ah, oh, yeah. Those babies were delicious. Babies? From the mosaics? 
You know that's just a visual metaphor, right? The fruits of the earth are not literally babies. Ah, that explains the soapy aftertaste. Right. If I lose the bet, you will be allowed to partake of the fruit. Now, if I may. Phoenix realized only the song of the sirens would free the Cyclops from Circe's spell. Thirsty, you're mine. No, oh boy. Not quite. Circe and her pops, Poseidon, had sent reinforcements. A warm welcome to all of our friends, fans, community members and participants here, together with viewers on many platforms worldwide. Thank you for joining us and thank you for being valued members of our community here every single day on Twitch and on my channel, Dear the Miller Gaming Dialogue. We are having a weekend of interesting introductions in here, starting with Phoenix Immortals Immortals Phoenix Rising and this is the demo of the game that's been in circulation now for a little while and then it'll be followed up followed up by another very interesting title that came out recently on all platforms and that is Little Nightmares 2. So um, thank you first of all uh, to everyone who's been sending us uh, your messages with feedback and um, everyone was very very delighted and elated that we are having quite a selection of Niche or brand new or you know coming soon types of games here on the channel quite a few coming in on our riders and I think we managed to kick off a good discussion uh, on the front of uh, um, well first of all a very good discussion related to some of the things said in the press I think the gaming community and particularly people who are uh, dedicated fans of Mass Effect and uh, uh, Destiny were very very angry with uh, what they've read initially particularly during the first couple of days as the uh, Art Riders demo was released on several online hubs. I mean, you will know the ones I, you know, the ones in question, but I'm not going to be singling them out here. Basically, the overall feeling was that the game was not performing well and it was looking like the old gen game, very poorly written, was one of the things that really did stick out, and that the action was very pedestrian, mundane, that no one was really excited. But the stats and the community responses on Reddit and Twitter actually did tell a different sort of story. So the message, messages I received here were basically from people who agreed with my viewpoint that um, Outriders are a beautiful written game and uh, uh, that the game resembles Anthem, Destiny and most importantly Mass Effect in all sorts of ways. It has lots of reference to these wonderful masterpieces but also it is a very original one, a new game coming out of uh, a, a Polish developer called um, people can fly and we're very very excited because we love the game we loved all the activity the cutscenes harvesting and the demo is actually massive it's huge you have loads and loads of activities there for you to complete and you can be playing for probably up to 10 15 hours if you want to if you wanted to do the open world some harvesting and to get some good gear and uh, you know it's absolutely tipped up <coughs> so i'm not sure what the problem was but uh, certainly um, the gaming community rebelled and definitely wanted to make their own views clear so the messages I received very much aligned with everything we've seen on Twitter and Reddit where the vast majority of participants, people are trying our traders demo are very very happy with what they've seen. They had some concerns about the tech side of things, on the multiplayer there were some minor issues and also I think on the old gen PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 1 the game was not really giving us the best possible frame rate. I certainly can say for Xbox because I played it for about 10 days on my console it didn't seem to perform too well but that 
you know, it's, this is a demo and they obviously have given it to us um, six weeks prior to the game release and they want to test the way the game performed, particularly after the participants joined in on the multiplayer and they all wanted to see uh, principally, um, you know, the overall performance and the overall reception. Obviously, they're not going to be changing the contents of the game at the moment, but um, the technical abilities and the technical side of things will be uh, carefully scrutinized, and I'm sure that um, there come the day of the release, we are going to be having a much better performance. Well, I may be, you know, proven otherwise, but we'll have to wait and see. So thank you for the messages, and thank you for everyone who said really are enjoying the sessions of the Abimele Introducing because you're introducing some very interesting games that we never heard of and two that stick in mind really are Going Under, uh, the game I introduced last weekend available um, on um, Xbox and all other platforms and uh, it's the game that uh, was offered free of charge so uh, we have freebies every weekend and you know some of those are very very interesting great indie games introduced through um, Xbox services and I absolutely loved it so thank you to several community members who were writing and indeed describing their own delight with that uh, dungeon crawler with a twist you know it's, it's a game that's quite political and um, I think when we look back um, once we sort of move forward like 10 years we are going to be saying ah oh, this game really represents the way things were in the US uh, particularly in certain sectors of our industry and it's rare that you get a game with that degree of um, kind of historic significance I mean I've seen a few but this was really quite pertinent and I'm also inviting everyone to try it going under available on Xbox and I think on Switch as well uh, on a good price and you can have a look and if you're wondering what the game's like just just you know dig it up on my uh, channel you can watch them play back and you will be able to see the ins and outs of that uh, interesting dungeon crawler with that twist okay so uh, uh the other game people quite liked uh that i introduced was um echo generation and the game's not out yet so it was just a demo released as part of the uh, uh last year's uh, game awards jeff Keighley's uh you know academy for awards for uh, uh video games and um the game is due to be coming out later in the year but really very very good one and very simple graphics but very very um um, enlightening uh, in dialogue and very humorous and very entertaining so I really quite look forward to its release as well so many more games to come we had already uh, last week also Descenders the game's been run for a little while and on the list there are games such as uh, Falconeer, Spirit Ferrer, and uh, Project Winter this weekend we'll be looking at some of these in addition to the ones which I'm streaming today so thank you thank you for your support and thank you for all that you have been giving us here during the last three years uh, very soon we'll be coming to our third year anniversary and we'll have some special competitions and rewards in here for all of our dedicated veterans in the same way as uh, we did have last year as we were commencing our second year anniversary so you know get ready for that still a few months ago this is going to be in september so <laughs> it's not around the corner but uh, it did seem like the last year has been very hectic and our third year indeed here on the channel has been perhaps taking a different direction because our first years were dedicated primarily to Destiny 1 and 2 and we've had um, the vast majority of our sessions dedicated to both the gameplay, our community and everything else. After two years we kind of diversified somewhat, we had quite a selection of different titles in here. They included um, Apex and uh, Warzone and uh, um, The Division 1 and 2, and, you know, the, the list just goes on, quite a number of different games and I think we all enjoyed that degree of diversity. I have to say I'm a bit surprised that uh, there are very, very few members of uh, one community migrating to another. So um, from overall experiences, only the only one person from Destiny community, which I think uh, does uh, consist of uh, maybe 500 uh, veterans, uh, we, we had, well maybe maybe a few more even, uh, we had only Sekapupa joining us uh, for Apex and for Warzone. So it does tell you that the mindset of the gamer today is still very much tied to a particular gaming activity and maybe one particular open world. People like enjoying that world and exploring it and doing it indefinitely or infinitely in fact. I did come across a number of Destiny veterans and players who were with us and uh, principally they just play Destiny, they play nothing else. and. Finally, we did come across a few who were just doing Warzone and nothing else. So it's very interesting. Uh, I'm not that kind of gamer. I've played games for many, many years and um, 
I like playing all the games and different genres and like all sorts. Obviously, I have a preference for RPGs and open world, but you know, there are very interesting battle royale games. There's some death matches. There's some uh, um, platformers. There's, there's, you know, the, the list just goes on and on. Basically, the variety uh, of titles available today on streaming platforms, in particular, is mind-boggling. And just reminding myself of the very big news from yesterday. Well, I'm, I'm quite certain every single serious gamer has already heard. Uh, of it and uh, was fully aware of that taking place but yesterday it was consolidated and we've heard it was actually consolidated last week because the EU had given uh, the green light uh, for Bethesda to become part of Microsoft Group and uh, automatically Microsoft services could then be presenting some of the titles through the streaming services in Europe and um, that's exactly what's happened yesterday so we have quite a selection of about 20 games I think uh, Bethesda games that include uh, Doom Trilogy as well as uh, Fallout and Elder Scrolls and Wolfenstein. All of those are being uh, introduced to both console and um, um, Xbox for PC uh, as Xbox exclusives. So, you know, quite something. You're really wondering whether these games will be disappearing from other platforms in due course. Presently they will not because obviously there are contractual obligations but Bethesda becoming part of Microsoft Group will mean that um, they'll be having everything released through Microsoft and the Game Pass first of all. And that, for us, the subscribers, the dedicated Xbox veterans, is a true delight. Whether it will work in a long term in terms of their development and uh, you know game creation remains to be seen. But nevertheless, I'm very, very excited and um, it will be fantastic to see all the Wolfenstein games instantly accessible through uh, Game Pass. And the list just goes on and on. You know, I've, I've, my backlog is massive and I really have to be breaking up some of my streams with other games being thrown in because otherwise I just you know keep playing uh, a couple of games and uh, the rest will be just waiting there, uh, w waiting out there for me to um, uh, come back in or have a look at. And that itself is uh, a very very um, protracted type of process which is not making me uh, feel very very happy. I like trying out games as they come out, and uh, you know the list is just very very lengthy. And also. I think if you're using uh, Microsoft and PlayStation Store, they've been massively improved in recent months, I should say, last two years, and we are able to get instant trailers and then lots of information every single game. So, for instance, what I do is have one day a week where I'm just looking at whatever is new out there, and that's usually on Wednesday, right? Uh, because on Tuesday we have reset and. Uh, the reset in the UK is up to 6 o'clock, so I do this uh, on Wednesday morning. So I go through all the new new additions, and, you know, new special offers, new deals, resets, everything, and always look at the new titles that are being introduced uh, to uh, the regular weekly uh, services on those stores. And there's quite a selection, so you can really get very knowledgeable just by browsing through the list and looking at trailers and maybe exploring them a bit more if you, if you go to uh, YouTube and check out some of the developer videos and so it's, it's never been a better time to become fully um, informed and uh, there are games that always catch your eye due to the graphics the gameplay or something else said and um, you know it's quite quite a list I have said it many times I feel that the um, video game industry is now on the level that we've seen with um, um, the cinema in the 1930s where we had studios developing after the sign was invented and you know suddenly you had creations of many different studios they all had uh, specific uh, um, competitor rules which were established and each studio was producing like one genre that was being delivered to uh, uh, the worldwide audiences uh, through a selection of stars who were tied to a particular studio so it became very much of a um, fair game but on a much grander scale than before and also produced on a massive industrial scale this is at the point where film industry became a true industry uh, with you know the assembly line procedure being applied to film studios and you had actors like Barbara Stanwyck or Betty Davies or um, you know Gene Arthur Catherine Hebben they would literally walk from one set to another in the course of one day and film maybe three or four different films and they'd be hopping from one film to another, filming the scenes according to script. The studios are obviously in very, very close quarters. It's very easy to walk from one set to another. And they'd, they'd, their work day would last more than 12 hours a day. They'd, they would have to be there at 6 o'clock in the morning. They'd depart after 8 at night. And, you know, it's be, it was really a very, very um, industrious period for that industry. Uh, 
on an unprecedented scale. You know, the world's never ever seen anything of that sort before. And I think that's happening here. I think we are having the same degree of productivity, hence the um, allegations of mistreatment of staff and too long working hours and uh, many other pressures arising from quite a string of companies. We've seen and heard uh, some of that on Reddit and elsewhere. And I think it's part and parcel of uh, the current status. You know, it's a competitive industry out there. Everyone wants to be excelling and you've got to be dealing with heavyweights like the creator, the publisher of this game, Ubisoft. Um, and, you know, if you are a small indie studio with two or three men working on a game, you want to be excelling. And um, it's a tough, tough old world out there, particularly today with the pandemic and all the elements of economic crisis looming and, you know, everything else. But on the other hand, had we not had the means to which we buy and sell online and communicate through video hookups and Zooms and WhatsApps of this world together with online gaming, then I think the world would have been in a state of complete turmoil. We probably would have had massive wars everywhere because people would be cut off completely. There'd be no trade and, you know, so you can see there are some very, very important, very positive sides of the tech which are being creatively, positively and... Um, appropriately used in order to enhance humanity I guess uh, contrasting some of the views which are completely and overwhelmingly opposing all of that I'm definitely not one of these but I do ask for some degree of modesty you know a bit like playing games if you play games moderately it's great fun if you keep hammering them 24 7 it's not very good for your health and um, <laughs> it's just uh, the the rule of uh, modesty needs to be applied everywhere in any uh, aspect of your everyday life so yeah, so the big news is Bethesda games are now on Xbox Game Pass and they're exclusive to that platform and we are getting them for uh, the console downloads as well as for Xbox and PC, so Xbox 4 PCs. So that's great and um, I look forward to this. I'll have a look at it today, later today, it's Friday, right? I may download one of those, have a look at it. What, you know, it's never been a better time to be revisiting Fallout, so look, Fallout 3, Fallout 4 and Fallout 76, all of them fully accessible on uh, Xbox Game Pass. To tell you the truth, I do have these games on PlayStation and <laughs> Xbox. I you know, own them uh, with all the uh, DLCs and um, the content. But I think for everyone else, it's perhaps a junior gamer or somebody who thought that the premium packs were too expensive, this is going to be, you know, games galore type of period because uh, uh, they did say Xbox did see the release of their new console, Xbox One X and S, to be a bridging, well, uh, like a, uh, a a bridge between two different worlds. The world where we were still buying physical products, i.e. copies of a game, local shops, high streets, you name it, and then having everything done through digital download and instant access. So it's a very, very big contrast. I think people like possessing all the, you know, the game boxes and um, instructions and uh, all the things that came together with them, particularly special editions. You had some stickers, cards, some big special editions come together with figurines and a lot of other additional material like books and illustrations and posters and but I think the industry is going down the route of everything being fully digital so it's instant access and uh, the new console um, series s does not have a physical drive and this is obviously a serious downer for anyone who wants to be just doing it and uh, you know playing discs as well as everything that's been downloaded digitally but I don't see it as a problem as you have your Xbox One and you know you can use it for physical drive and then for everything else the S model will be ap applicable and appropriate uh, but my point in all of that is Phil Spencer the head of Xbox he did say they did have a um, strategic plan for the next five years that will be exclusively focusing on streaming services being the main thing so that will be xCloud and Xbox Game Pass and I think it's paying dividends in 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 all, in all sorts of ways. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm one of those who can tell you that <coughs> previously I would be very hesitant and a bit frosty on purchasing uh, my favourite games uh, through um, Xbox uh, at Microsoft Store, I should say, because I thought the price ranges were not really, um, you know, uh, for my uh, of my liking, and uh, I I thought the prices were not as good as on PlayStation Store, for instance, but ever since I've uh, um, uh, gone to Xbox Game Pass and I've been using the um, uh, free day services and everything else that comes together with the package and the ultimate and you know the previous subscriptions, I just found myself sometimes playing games that I really liked 
and I've not really paid a lot of attention to them previously and therefore after playing them for a while on uh, the Game Pass I would purchase the game. The game was also offered on a greater discounted price for anyone who is a member of uh, the Ultimate. So it's fantastic, you know, you can get sometimes games like The Division for uh, on the price of um, I think it was £3.50 or something like that. It was like unbelievably low. Um, the Division 2 is a massive game. It's a bit like Destiny, ever evolving. And £3.50 for all of that is just a no brainer. The Division 1, even given for free, um, a AAA blockbuster game, I got uh, Ubisoft's Ghost Recon um, Breakpoint for £9.50. And this was like less than one year after the game was released. So that is the way the industry is going that is the direction and this is what they want to be doing so everyone needs to really subscribe to these services try them subscribe initially on one dollar one pound for a few months and find out for yourself whether you like it but that's the future and uh, i think this is part and parcel of what we are going to be getting the other thing is uh, all the developers are looking at very interactive very easily downloadable and very enjoyable um, demos and alphas and betas and uh, you've seen that recently that they've really toyed with the idea um, between VIP demos like in Anthem which were not really fully kind of extract well they, they didn't have the content that you would see in the game um, the content was somewhat different so it was something exclusive Resident Evil giving you a completely different thing for you to play which is not in the game at all you know to attract to both to the game and to the demo and then you've had um, the developers like um, people can fly with Outriders taking a risk and giving the first chunk of the game so it's a prologue and chapter one with all of its content and you know some developers not giving you anything like cyberpunk nothing <laughs> and I think that probably was a fluke and they will seriously consider that uh, for their future releases but um, I guess the, the, the difference there is if you're working on a game where you really are spending a lot of time and energy on um, every single detail and you want your community and um, the game has to enjoy that as they go along then <coughs> releasing demos and um, alphas and betas may well be spoiling somebody's entertainment and I know for certain there's quite a number of veterans in my community who will tell you um, they will not want to be playing demos and they will just wait until the game's released and they'll do it from the day one because they want to be fully immersed so it's quite similar to people who want to be always avoiding trailers uh, they don't want to see trailers because they will create a bias towards a film and they'll think well the trailers of amplifying something that's not at all good in the film and I get an assumption that film's brilliant and I go there and I get disappointed I mean that's true I mean I, I've seen that many times for myself but yeah it's down to the preference and uh, I personally um, as far as video game is concerned uh, do not actually watch other people stream the games that I want to be playing on Twitch or YouTube I never do that I never do that and particularly the games that have linear narrative in you know, the storytelling games because that was a spoiled experience for me but what I will do is I'll enter alphas and betas I do them all the time as well as demos in order to get a flavor of a game because quite frankly if I'm a streamer if I do regular everyday streams I will not have enough time to do everything and therefore having a shorter demo or alpha and beta will give me a very good flavor and see whether I like the game or not and that will be very very remarkable I think the overall need for these is decreasing because as the games become accessible through streaming services you can simply hop in and try the game on the day of its release if you are for instance a, a member of our Xbox Game Pass community and the exclusives like Gears and uh, um, you know all the other ones uh, Halo they, they're all going to be released um, uh, on the platform so you can you can get in straight away sometimes even a day or two before the game actually becomes accessible to others and you know you'll, you'll step in and you'll try the game you play it in full so these are all the different options that we have and I have to say the number of titles and the volume of some of the uh, um, uh, games that uh, the, the overall you know the, the, the duration uh, of uh, some of those games are there is is just simply um, mind-boggling and uh, if you were to I mean I think as a rule of thumb you need to have only one open world game uh, played at any given time and then you can have maybe one battle royale which obviously is just the matches that keep rolling and then you can have maybe another narrative game which is not based on open world that is kind of playing from beginning to end and that's it there's like three different types and that's all you can do and this is why I do at the moment I'm doing um, 
uh, my regular uh, streams in here of uh, Apex and Warzone, which are Battle Royale, and then we have uh, um, story-based games, like uh, some of those that I'm introducing here uh, uh, through um, my regular daily mill introducing uh, uh, episodes on Gaming Dialogue, and then I also play One Open World, which is presently The Witcher. Like previously, it was Gears of War, it was uh, uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance, or Fallout 76, or Red Dead Redemption 2. So it's like a one big open world game which you can do sort of step by step. And you can explore it, and uh, you'll have the um, you, know, you have the you require that regularity, unique continuity in order to follow the story. Otherwise, you'll miss out on threads, and the game will not be as interesting. And I've got to say, The Witcher 2 is is a remarkable game, very difficult at times, and it's similar to Elder Scrolls and um, to uh, uh, some of the other games where in fact the story is pushing you forward quite fast but you need to do all the other side activities like um, side quests and missions in order to get uh, um, your witcher skills updated and uh, you need to get um, you know, um, extra enhancers, bits of kit and your skill tree needs to go up and I quickly came to uh, uh, one part which is in chapter one where I need to kill like a massive monster with uh, one of the other uh, female witches, and um, oh, she, she's what, she, she's just a witch, and uh, I, th I can't remember what the title is, but she, she's got like special powers, and she's like a very part, you know, very remarkable with everything that she can do against all kinds of uh, beasts and humans and like. And um, I just don't have my skill tree done up, and then I I thought, well, that monster's far too difficult. What do I do? And it's all down to the witch's skills. And then I came across uh, um, rates last night in dungeons, and I realized that only if I was using the skill tree and some of the special abilities, I was able to defeat them. Otherwise, it just doesn't work. They're too strong. So it's quite tricky, and you need to learn how to play the game, and sometimes have to replay certain sections. So, you know, it's, it's challenging, but definitely very, very interesting. And I think anyone who is doing the games which have that degree of complexity is the best to do, have the first run on easy because if you want to do the hardest level you need to be a veteran these types of games and still it will be quite challenging but you know down to player preference I, I, I like I can see in this instance you've seen up four or five difficulty levels I've gone for the story difficulty which is presenting us with as much story as possible and then you know, just crack on it's not all about the battles but for some people they just want the battles and no story as we've seen in uh, <laughs> Wars and Apex and uh, some of other Call of Duty and Destiny, in fact, uh, competitors, where people just wanted the speed runs, they're not interested in the story, it's all about the elimination. Fair enough. But my channel is definitely not for that. Well, my friends, let's have a look at this wonderful game, um, which, in fact, has been run for a little while. Uh, it's been released on the December the 3rd of last year, so we are talking about about three months. In circulation and the demos was released in beforehand um, I really want to play the demo already in December I listened to Larry and Jeff talking about it quite a bit on Xbox podcast and I think both recommended the game they really found it to be very very interesting and um, uh, highly entertaining and uh, comprising the elements of some other games we've seen before I mean here we have Assassin's Creed Odyssey as being the obvious reference but I think uh, um, uh, Starlight is the other that uh, I've seen from um, is it Starlink or Starlight uh, uh, from Ubisoft does have the similar sort of elements and a wonderful wonderful um, wonderful game and you know so sort of reference to all the other games but obviously with uh, a twist we'll, we'll have a look at it uh, in depth now so the game was originally known as Gods and Monsters and it's an, uh, an action, ac action adventure game developed by Ubisoft Quebec and published by Ubisoft so um it's been released on Amazon Luna, Windows, Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, 5, Stadia, Xbox One, and Series X and S on across all platforms, to be uh, fair. But if I'm not mistaken, no, it's been released on Windows for PC, obviously. Uh, we have Scott Phillips as uh, the game director, and as I said, it's Ubisoft Quebec. So the story is told in narration by the gods Prometheus and Zeus, and tells the journey of Phoenix on her way to save her brother, turned to stone and become embroiled um, on the escape of the evil Typhon, right? So we've seen a bit of that in the cutscene. I'm not sure whether the game starts in the same way, whether this is just the beginning of the game, or whether you know, we'll be doing sort of um, small ex excerpts from um, you know, the, um, the activity out there. 
So Immortals is an action adventure video game played from a third person perspective. At the beginning of the game, players can customize the gender, voice, and the appearance of Phoenix, which is what we'll do next, using Aphrodite's beauty chair. At any point in the game, they can return to the beauty chair and customize Phoenix. The game is set in a large open world consisting of seven distinct regions inspired by the Greek gods. The player character is accompanied by a companion bird named Phosphor, which can identify locations of interest on the map. Phoenix can traverse the world quickly through climbing cliffs, riding on a mount and flying using the wings of Daedalus. The full open world will be accessible from the start of the game, <coughs> so as we start we're going to be you know, jumping with both feet in. As players explore the worlds, they would encounter rifts which would teleport them uh, to the vaults of Datros, which are a series of platforming challenges that require players to utilize both Phoenix combat and traversal abilities. Players can also complete various side objectives and optional puzzles. The world of the Golden Isles are occupied with various enemies inspired by Greek mythology, including Minotaurs to Cyclops. There are two modes of melee attack. Light attacks with a sword are fast but weak, but heavy attacks with an axe are slow but strong. Phoenix can also use bows and arrows to defeat enemies. Players need to manage Phoenix's stamina during combat, as they will become exhausted when they attack successfully. As players progress in the game, they would also be able to unlock powerful godlike abilities. For instance, Phoenix can unlock Ares Wrath, a group of spears that thrust enemies into the air. Armor and weapons can also be upgraded by collecting sufficient crafting resources in the game's world. So we have loads of loads of information here on the developer, so we'll read that as well, because lots of our friends who are watching uh, the um, uh, the episodes here are quite curious. They want to know more about how these games have been conceived and created. So we always provide you with a wealth of information. You can always go to um, various internet-based hubs, online hubs, that will give you in-depth information. But you know, we also want to be uh, active participants in the entire process. You know, from the way the game was conceived, the way it was made, and then we become the gamers, the active participants in the process of enjoying the characters but it's, you know I, I always had a drive to find out how a film was made who was behind that film particularly if I loved uh, a particular title I want to know who the director was who the actors were I wanted to know uh, who wrote the screenplay how long did it take for film to be made uh, what was the actual process of getting the screenplay done you know films like Apocalypse Now um, that taxi driver to give you just uh, once upon a time in America I mean once upon a time in America money given to Sergio Leone without a single letter written on the film you know incredible he just convinced the producer uh, with a story that he gave him at a dinner which they were having together that this was going to be it and he presented it in such a beautiful uh, kind of picturesque fashion that the producer was smitten and gave him all the money and there were lots of problems with that film and you you know anyone who is a film buff will, will know the details um, but then you have other films where like Apocalypse Now screenplay in 1967 confiscated and you know considered to be reactionary and uh, troubling for the government position uh, of that era as America was involved in that very very difficult very protracted war in um, Southeast Asia and you know or you had taxi drive a script that nobody wanted to direct uh, written waiting there on Paul Schrader's desk and then finally finding Martin Scorsese who would uh, take the risk and um, well we know the film's legendary today but nobody in America wanted to watch the film at the time <laughs> it just was down to the film festivals in Europe that you know gave it 10 out of 10 Otherwise, in America, would have ended up on um, exploitation, triple X circuits, and nobody would have seen the film. Anyway, so these are the stories we all want to find out how our games are being made. So this game was developed by Ubisoft Quebec, uh, the team which created Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Game director Scott Phillips added that the project originated from a software bug the team discovered during the development of Odyssey, which changed the humans on the player's crew into the giant cyclopses and decided that it would be a good idea to create a separate game that embraces the mythological side of Greece. Due to the positive reception of Odyssey, uh, Ubisoft management agreed to, uh, to greenlight the project. So the game was officially announced as Gods and Monsters during E3 2019. Initially set to be released on February the 26th of uh, 2020, the game was delayed in October 2019 after another Ubisoft 10-pole release. 
Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint, so it's yeah, obviously a AAA blockbuster, failed to be commercially successful. And I know why, because they made a terrible error in there by extracting a, a four-man team, which was run by AI. You have just one player, and you had to be bringing in forcefully other live players in. A lot of people didn't like that, because it was clashing with the concept that they introduced before in Wildlands, and it just killed the game. And it did take about um, six or eight months before they introduced the AI three-piece that was joining uh, the main protagonist. And then they also introduced Experience Mode, which I think is absolutely terrific. But, you know, eight months later, that's a bit a little too late for some of the hardcore veterans that didn't, didn't buy into it, unfortunately. Still not performing too well. Very sad to see that, because I love the game. And um, the other thing was storytelling. They made it a bit similar to Destiny, very non-linear, and a lot of people didn't like that. They, f they felt the campaign had to be a bit more closely tied to all that they were doing. And uh, to be frank, there are so many activities in there that they do feel a bit disjointed. But you know, if you're a Ghost Recon veteran, you recognize everything. And um, I love the game, and I was particularly happy to have uh, acquired the game eight months later on a price of I think less than nine, it was eight pounds, nine pounds. It was very, very cheap, and you know the actual price at the time was still £75, £65, you know, the, the top range. Anyway. Um, so that we, well, we heard that due to the release of um, Breakpoint, uh, this game was indeed delayed. And then the delay gave additional time for the development team to ensure that their respective innovations are perfectly implemented as to deliver optimal experiences for everyone. Uh, Quebec Studio used the additional time to add Zeus and Prometheus as the game's dual narrators, replacing Greek poet Homer, that's interesting, who was initially intended to fulfill his role. So it'd be, you know, Homer talking and then uh, running the show, so to speak, there, telling the tale. Um, a work in progress built on the game was leaked on Stadia under the codename Orpheus in June 2020. It was re, re revealed as Immortals Phoenix Rising on September the 10th, 2020 the studio decided to rename the game to reflect its narrative focus and put my emphasis on Phoenix, the game's protagonist. The name change appeared to be a result from a trademark dispute with Monster Energy, which challenged the gods and monsters name, believing it would cause confusion. It's a drink, isn't it? Uh, Jeffrey Yolim, uh, who had previously written for previous Ubisoft titles such as Assassin's Creed 2, Far Cry 3, Child of Light, Served as a uh, narrative director and lead writer for the game. Um, the humour of the game, particularly that involving the bickering between the narrators Zeus and Prometheus, was inspired by films such as Robin Hood Many Sights, The Princess Bride and The Naked Gun. In regards to adapting Greek mythology for modern audiences, Yohalim explained that he didn't want to avoid the dark aspects of its gods and heroes, providing the example of Theseus' kidnapping of Helen of Troy and instead wanted to specifically highlight those elements through a modern perspective as it speaks to our current political climate and who we are as human beings on social media. Yoelim also believed um, that the capability of Greek gods and heroes to commit evil acts made them more human, saying that the Greeks believed in balance where what makes us human and makes us complete are both our strengths and weaknesses. Gareth Koika, who previously worked on Ori, and the Blind Forest and its sequel Ori and the Will of the Wisps composed a score for the game. Ancient Greek instruments such as uh, lyre and guitar were used when he was recording the music. Koika also commissioned these instruments from a Greek luthier and had them transported across the Atlantic. So we've heard the game was released across all platforms on December the 3rd of last year. Right. Well, that sounds truly wonderful. The game is indeed very, very appetizing. And uh, we are going to be cracking on with the full uh, introduction to the game very, very shortly. So stay with us. And indeed, we are going to be carrying on with our dear Bingham introducing here on the channel. And really look forward to see what Phoenix is going to be like.
All right, my friends, let's have a look at Phoenix. So this is her inventory. We have her sword, which is uh, called Tempered Sword of Achilles, 32 damage. We have her axe, Tempered Axe of Atlanta, and we have Tempered Bow. We have Valor of the Soldier Breastplate, Valor of the Soldier Helm, Wings of Daedalus. Silvery uh, Sheen of the Willow Tree hides the attentive gaze of Aitia. Okay. Inventory. Map. Let's see where we are. Cycle icons. Okay. Legend. Fine. And then abilities. Let's see the abilities. Godly powers. Skills. Looks like some of our skills already have been enabled. So we're not starting out. Um, with nothing. Looks like we won this match. Approach the edge of the cliff. Mm. Beautiful, um, beautiful graphics, as you could see. Her brother has been frozen in there. Let's have a look at him. Odysseus had taken flight to the island of the Siren Song on his mechanical wings. He wore a pair stolen from Circe's weaponarium and massage parlor. You know that Odysseus visited Circe after Polyphemus. But go on. Phoenix was not so lucky. Wingless, she just had to believe. Hmm. Yeah. You can carry those big rocks. Take a screenshot. All right, let's have a look. Reach the island of the sirens, so that must be up there. So, jump and then glide. Phoenix hurdled through the air, and then, a miracle! Odysseus's wings appeared on her back. By the gods, I can fly! Those do not belong to Odysseus, and she's had them the entire time. Prometheus, she just had to believe. She can be grappling, crawling, that's very good. So you see, Phoenix uncovered a set of targets. Philoctetes had carried his faithful weapon, the Bow of Heracles, here to Creasy Island. Tada! History. I have no idea what you just said. 
But clearly, Phoenix needs to use the Bova Disses, which she recovered from the Pegasus Netherverse, to light some stuff on fire. Uh. To dry the bit. to explore in there, I don't think. Okay. This is the island, I think. is not causing any trouble. We don't want to fight. Phoenix couldn't wait to have the secret of the gods in her clutches. She would rule over all... You know she's trying to save all of you. Why would she do that? Maybe because we gave the mortals fire. Yeah, I chained you to a rock for all eternity as punishment. Good point. Why is she trying to help you? Exactly. up there. Okay. Collect some of these blue mushrooms. God. Probably inside. Maybe not. Maybe we need to go up. Right. More mushrooms. Mind you, I'm eating quite a few mushrooms myself at the moment, so that's good. <laughs> No obstacles. Oh, very good. Look at this. That's awesome. Look at that. Looks beautiful. Ambrosia has been collected. Okay. work out uh, how to fly some of the tactics in there. Have to jump and fly. Well, we'll find out eventually. But I, as you could see, the game's beautifully designed. This, this one looks incredible. Dragon Quest XI. Cersei and Poseidon will never give up until the mortal fell. knew the truth. Odysseus was a spy sent by mortals to steal the secret of the gods from the Cyclops. Polyphemus. Gesundheit. What does that mean? What does what mean? Anyway, Circe and Poseidon would never let Phoenix seize the secret. 
Tricky with um, this control R1 and R2 being pressed at the same time. Nope, we can't collect this the chest. Hmm, this is cool. Aladdin Skate New Gear Dark Glare Mask. Wearing it now. I am. And that's we need to equip that mask, I think. So this is one percent stamina, one twenty. Okay, I'll take the, this one. Looks better. See it. It's funny because we can't see it in her, but I'm wearing it. Dark glare mask. Okay, that's sorted. So it should be a bit more powerful. Inventory is used to manage Phoenix's gear, animal companions, and items. Sometimes she will have to be sprinting. <coughs> All right. Hades that weekend? Did I say Cerberus? I meant a griffin. Make it the ship of this year's sea dunder to escape from Polythemus. No, a lion. Might as well be a flock of roosters. Oh, good roosters. call. You're not serious. The roosters of the sea. Isn't that tuna? Summoned by Poseidon to crack up a storm. <laughs> Almost recovered the siren song, which would dispel Cersei's curse. The only way to do that is with herbs. I'm saying this as a friend, 
You need to cool it with the herbs. You get paranoid. It's awkward. Anyway, Phoenix felt the invisible hands of her ancestors giving her the strength to move mountains. That's not the strength of her ancestors. She's wearing the bracers of Heracles. This isn't some magical object that renders heavy things light. Prometheus, it's love. <laughs> Good, we need two more. Pick it up and bring it down now. Wonder whether this would work. Probably not.
That's tricky. Feather. Hmm. So we're stuck somewhat, aren't we? Stag, maybe? So that's fine. How about the other one? Well, that wasn't really rocket science, it was just tricky. You had to swap those two boxes. Alright, so I'll pick this one up. And then we need to find the last one. He's waiting for us. But I must admit, the, the actual environment in here looks really incredible. Beautifully designed. Really. And look at the motion. So smooth. Well, you know, people who play this game or Ubisoft games in general, they'll have a problem with that, right? Just because the animation there is not as smooth as this. Ah, uh, needs to be here, I think. Last one. Like that. Just one.
I see. I think I know what I need to do. Must be another platform I've not seen yet, somewhere around here. <coughs> on the other side, maybe. Inside, I don't think of anything else. Uh. It just needs to be placed in there. Oh, no, there is. Okay. <laughs> so it's that that needs to be brought.
Oh, that's good. So now we've got uh, the last one. Very good. This one. Following in Odysseus's footsteps, Phoenix was ready to break the curse and learn the secret or die trying. This is a side quest. No one dies on a side quest until now. Wings of the Dreadful. <laughs> Wings of the Dreadful, look at that. <laughs> so what's the benefit? You can glide, you can glide, you can glide. Okay, and this one? It's said that his wings are weighed by the pain of a once beautiful woman turned into a repulsive gorgon. Oh, look at that. Ah. Wings of the Dreadful, I need to remember. Look like a butterfly now. What's this? A lion imbued with a song of the sirens which has the power of lifting circus cause no hang around. Which has the power of lifting circus curse of a polyphemus the cyclops. Okay, we've picked it up. We know what it is. What does this say? see. So we can place it on or we can just extract it but it's still going to be there. I think we'll, we'll keep it on for a little while, right? So give our character a bit of uh, punch really with the outfits. Now, time to make another cup of tea. Short break and when I come back we'll carry on with our adventure. So far, just like Larry and Jeff said, a wonderful game.
Well, my friends, hope you had a good break, stretched a bit, had a breath of fresh air, maybe a cup of tea, a bit of uh, a respite, and we'll carry on with our Immortals Phoenix Rising adventure here. We're introducing the game to everyone. So far, so good. Lots of lots of interesting activities. Beautiful open world environment. I've got to say, I'm hooked already. I want to buy the game straight away, but you know, it's still pricey. It's a new game. We're waiting for it to come on. Um, become accessible on Xbox Game Pass perhaps or indeed on um, PS5 services, we'll see not a priority, but it's just, you know, I love these games with wonderful smooth graphics and beautiful open worlds and this is definitely one of those so we need to return back to Cypher of Silence, so we need to jump in here I think yeah. I'm not flying now seem to fly too well. <laughs> yeah, I need to still work this out. Doesn't matter, we can walk, or we can fly, or we can try different things. Inside here. <laughs> Grappling. I'm like a creepy crawly, aren't I? No, I want to try. It's just not working. I know. It must be doing something wrong. Oh, this reminds me of uh, Sea of Thieves. <laughs> Anyone who plays the game will tell you. In fact, I was listening to the podcast the other day, and um, it was Larry and Jeff again, of course, and they talked about Sea of Thieves and interviewed the game director. They described how different the game is today compared to its launch. Changed very considerably the structure and format. It's the way it needs to be with... Um, Open world multiplayer games, you know, the developer needs to be very receptive to their own community and um, they need to see what the gamers will tell. And so far, so good. The people are loving it. They want to have certain things applied that would enhance the game, and um, it's exactly the way it's been. I still need to learn how to play because I had some problems with sailing in. Um, in uh, um, Sea of Thieves, and it did take me a bit of time to, to master the map reading, so I need to look at um, how come that uh, I was able to. Oh, no, no, no. Ah, yeah, let's double click. Got it. Oh, look at him. I don't want to cause any trouble. Phoenix is an athlete, as you could tell. Meters.
What's happening there? I didn't get it. Yeah, I didn't realise you can actually change it to a um Where was it? I thought I could. Hang on. Another way in. Perhaps this wasn't a good idea. Maybe I've gone the wrong way. We'll find some other way in. interesting because really on one hand you have the well similar to um, Assassin's Creed Odyssey but the actual in-game mechanics resemble um, the Uncharted and um, Lara Croft exploration and crawling and everything Alright, so it's been about there. So I'll be able to do it from here. Oh, collect these. <laughs> With that mask, my character Phoenix looks a bit devilish. Something out of uh, Warhammer. Three polyphemus from Sire. Circus Curse. There we are. Arrived. And 
just like that, Phoenix freed the Cyclops from Cersei's curse. The wise Cyclops. What is the secret of the gods? The Cyclops turned to her and spoke. Phoenix, the secret has been inside you all along. What the... The Cyclops said, I am but a small piece of a planet that is alive. How is that a secret? I've traveled back through time to prevent a terrible future from occurring. What is that evil? I see that people. Oh, come on. Actually, the Cyclops bellowed. I smell human flesh. I'm going to liquefy your insides into an amphora after I toast your organs with my lasers. Lasers? Yes, lasers, Prometheus. Are you a child? <laughs> The Cyclops can focus the light of the sun through a single eye. Actually, you'd need a magnifying glass. No, no one, one asked, asked you. you. Forget the lasers. Fight! This is going to be tricky. Eh? Phoenix was too busy checking out her cool new armor to care. Oh, look at the that. The end. So, no secret of the gods after all. Huh? You have lost, O Zeus. Not one truth in the entirety of this ridiculous tale you have spun. I, Prometheus, am triumphant. What do you have to say for yourself? No, I'm... I'm, I'm sorry. I was eating... You're right, this is so juicy. The fruit of Gaia. What can I say? Never make a bet when you're chained to a rock. Actually, that's the secret of the gods. Oppression. Hey, did I just win the bet? Well, it looks like this was our demo. Rather short and sweet, but definitely, definitely uh, very, very interesting and highly entertaining. Hope you enjoyed the activities as much as I did. Uh, I think it is basically um, satisfying all of my expectations and all I've heard about the game. And I think also the way they kind of created it, with uh, two gods talking and giving you the narrative and providing you a way in, 
is quite original and very good. So if you're interested, you can purchase Standard Edition or Gold Edition on all platforms that include consoles, PCs and Stadia. And therefore you can crack on, you can enjoy uh, all that Phoenix is going to be doing in there. So really to summarise, this is a game that resembles several other RPGs we've played before. I think most notably that the games that come to mind uh, visually are Starlink and um, um, Assassin's Creed Odyssey to do with the in-game mechanics. And then uh, uh, to top this off, also we have uh, you know other open wo open world games like Far Cry, for instance. And I think visually there are elements of Dragon Quest, although obviously this is not as cartoonish as the other. But still, I think it's a similar sort of world with mythical creatures, you know, with uh, all types of uh, characters that you're meeting, like for instance the Cyclops uh, that we've just seen, and um, some of those other birds very very good very enjoyable and thoroughly entertaining so for me 10 out of 10 I agree with all Jeff and Larry said about the game they played the the actual game rather than a demo and uh, you know they had plenty of good things to say about it uh, so one of those RPGs now on my list together with the rest the backlog is getting bigger and bigger right we've come to the end of the other introducing Immortals Phoenix Rising uh, I'll have a short break. After that, I'll introduce a little Nightmares 2. Another game, another demo. The game's been out now for a couple of weeks, and uh, a game that resembles Tim Burton's films. You know, it's cartoonish, a bit like animated films, but on the other hand, with a twist and a bit of a horror stroke survival uh, type of game bite. And uh, we'll see, we'll see. We'll crack on very, very shortly. So stay with us and join us for another episode of The Every Mill Introducing. In this instance, we are going to be looking at Little Nightmares 2. So I'll be back shortly and see you all in about five minutes. <laughs>